Hey, want to take a wild trip back in time to the Jurassic or Cambrian era? Trust me, it's going to be a wild ride. But surviving in those ancient environments would require some serious skills. At the start of the Cambrian era, the air would be as thin as at the base camp of Mount Everest. But the climate was actually pretty chill and consistent back then. However, there was one teeny tiny problem. No land plants or animals to feast on. So forget about firing up the grill for a juicy steak. Instead, you'd have to come up with creative ways to catch trilobites and other funky-looking shellfish. Good luck finding a spear without any wood or a fishing net without any plant fibers. And get ready to eat them raw, unless you can figure out how to extract oil from these creatures or burn dry seaweed. But wait, if you're looking for a more comfortable existence, you gotta travel to 100 million years ago, to the Silurian period. Here, things start to get a bit easier. The air is still thin, but there's a bit more oxygen to go around. Plus, the climate is warmer and cozier. Simple land plants have finally made their debut. Not only that, but the first bony fish also show up on the scene. So you might actually find something more palatable to munch on. Just watch out for those prehistoric millipedes and spider-like creatures that share the land with you. They might not be the best dinner companions. Yeah, it all sounds fun and feasible, but let's talk a bit more about this crazy idea of instant transportation. If you magically appeared in a different time, the first thing you'd have to worry about is the amount of oxygen in the air. Now, looking at that fancy graph up there, it's pretty clear that oxygen levels used to be super low before about 0.85 billion years ago. Like, we're talking just a few percent of the atmosphere. And there wasn't even any O2 in the air until this event called the Great Oxygenation happened about 2.3 billion years ago. So if you ended up back then, surviving would totally depend on how fit you are. If the oxygen concentration was less than 10%, you'd probably pass out, but not pass away. If it was just above 10%, you might be able to function, but you wouldn't exactly be living your best life. Based on oxygen alone, it seems like you could survive if you showed up around 0.75 billion years ago, give or take a few million years. Now let's talk about the cool stuff on land. The first land plants didn't show up until around 450 million years ago during the Ordovician period. Before that, there were some large algae hanging around, mostly in the range of 500 to 600 million years ago. But there wasn't a whole lot going on until those land plants came along. Other forms of life didn't start showing up on land until closer to 300 to 400 million years ago. But there was this critter, a myriapod, that lived around 428 million years ago and it was one of the earliest land dwellers. I mean, if you lived back then, you'd have to come up with fancy recipes featuring myriopods. Hmm. Not exactly mouth-watering. Don't worry if you find yourself back in time before all that land action. Around 500 to 600 million years ago, the oceans were teeming with life. There were these creatures called the Edicarian fauna, and they were some of the first well-preserved organisms. Some of them probably hung out in the shallow areas near the shore, so you might be able to get your hands on them for a meal. But remember, there weren't any land plants yet, so you'd probably have to eat them raw and with no potatoes on the side. You'd have a sort of prehistoric sashimi on your plate. Now, around 500 million years ago, things started to get really interesting in the oceans after something called the Cambrian Explosion. If you ended up in the Cambrian period, you'd have all sorts of weird animals to catch in the coastal zones. Check out the fossils from the Burgess Shale for some wild ideas. Look at these brachiopods, arthropods, and even worm-like critters. But again, no woody land plants at this point, so your meals would mostly consist of raw arthropods and algae. Alrighty, let's dive into the nitty-gritty of ice ages. It's when the Earth gets super chilly for a ridiculously long time, like millions and millions of years. This causes giant ice sheets and glaciers to spread all over the place, covering massive areas of the planet's surface. Believe it or not, our planet has experienced at least five major ice ages. The very first one happened about 2 billion years ago and lasted for 300 million years. 
the most recent ice age kicked off at around 2.6 million years ago, and we're technically still in it. So, we're in the middle of an ice age, but we're not currently living in an icy wonderland. That's because we're currently in an interglacial period. During an ice age, temperatures go through ups and downs. When it's warmer, those ice sheets and glaciers start to melt, creating what we call interglacials. And when it gets colder, they expand again, which we call glacials. So right now, we're enjoying the warm interglacial period of the most recent ice age, which kicked off around 11,000 years ago. When people mention the ice age, they're usually talking about the last glacial period that started around 115,000 years ago and ended roughly 11,000 years ago when our current interglacial period began. During that glacial period, things were way cooler than they are now. At its peak, when ice sheets covered most of North America, the average global temperature was about 46 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a whole 11 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than today's global average temperature. That temperature difference may not seem like much, but it was enough to turn most of North America and Eurasia into ice-covered landscapes. The Earth was also a lot drier, and sea levels were way lower because most of the water was trapped in those ice sheets. We're talking vast steppes, dry, grassy plains as far as the eye can see. And let's not forget about the savannas, warm, grassy plains, and deserts that were also part of the icy sea. During the Ice Age, there were some familiar critters roaming around, like brown bears, caribou, and wolves. But there were also some mega cool creatures that sadly went extinct when the Ice Age came to an end. We're talking mammoths, mastodons, saber-toothed cats, and giant ground sloths. Now, there are a bunch of theories floating around about why these magnificent beasts bit the dust. One idea is that us humans hunted them into extinction when we crossed paths with these megafauna. Our species, Homo sapiens, actually survived the Ice Age. We've been kicking it on this planet for around 300,000 years now, starting out in Africa and then spreading our awesomeness all over the globe. Some of our ancestors stayed put in Africa and didn't experience the full icy effects. Others ventured into different parts of the world, even braving the freezing cold of Europe's glacial environments. But we weren't the only ones out there. At the beginning of the Ice Age, there were other hominids, our closer relatives, scattered across Eurasia. We had the Neanderthals chilling in Europe and the mysterious Denisovans hanging out in Asia. Sadly, both of these groups seems to have vanished before the Ice Age wrapped up. Now, there are countless theories about how our species managed to survive the Ice Age while our hominin buddies didn't make it. Some believe it's because we're ridiculously adaptable and used our social skills, communication, and nifty tools to our advantage. And get this, humans didn't just hunker down during the Ice Age. Nope, we explored new territories and made ourselves at home. For the longest time, Folks thought humans didn't set foot in North America until after the ice sheets started melting. Fossilized footprints discovered at White Sands National Park in New Mexico prove that humans have been rocking it in North America for at least 23,000 years, right around the peak of the last ice age. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.